guys, we are in California and we are over at Save the Snakes Foundation to take their snake relocator course as well as learn how to properly handle and work with venomous snakes. So we figured we would film the uh, experience and share it with you all. Save the Snakes is a wonderful organization that helps protect and conserve snakes worldwide through education and community outreach. We've done a couple of fundraisers for them to help them out. Uh, the canvas painting fundraiser was all to benefit Save the Snakes, and they actually offer two training courses in California in the Sacramento area, a snake relocator course, and a venomous handling certification course. So today we are going to take the snake relocator course. So uh, we just got here actually, we have our hooks, We've got our, our, our herping attire on. We've got and a camera stand. Got a camera stand, and we're just going to share the experience with you. So let's head on in. I'm here with Michael Starkey, the founder of Save the Snakes, and I'm just curious, what are we gonna learn today in the Snake Relocator course? So today, this is a one-day course, and we're gonna be focusing on all things to basically what to do when you encounter a snake. And so that not only includes like our native gopher snakes, king snakes, but also a rattlesnake and how to safely get that rattlesnake secure and then relocate it to a more appropriate area. We'll also talk about what to do if we're bitten by a snake or see someone who is bitten by a snake and some general snake conservation information as well. Awesome, and this is like a whole day workshop, so we are so excited to get started. We'll go find our seats. Yes, thank you so much. And so just when Eric was talking about like um, a Western Diamondback, you know, being like a stereotypical, like, you know, snake of the West, like when I think of uh, that species, I really think of like this, you know, coming to get you, like, you know, don't mess with Texas kind of thing. Um, <laughs> that kind of connotation really sends this message that snakes are out to get us, right? But the reality is this is a snake that is totally afraid, terrified, and is doing everything in its power to say, stay away from me. And so it comes with this kind of this myth that snakes are aggressive and will chase you. And that's, that's not true. Snakes don't chase people. Here's a fun one. The government dropped timber rattlesnakes out of planes. What? Yeah. That's a new one. I looked this up. So this originated in Northern Car uh, North Carolina, and they, there was a conspiracy going out that the like, local wildlife department was releasing rattlesnakes and copperheads out into the, in, into the wild. Um, and that's bad because... <laughs> <laughs> For herpers, it's great, right? <laughs> never heard that. No, I've never heard that one. <laughs> right, right. So, edemia, bruising, blisters, blood formations. So, you're gonna, so edemia is swelling, right? So, around the bite, you're gonna start having uh, swelling. Like any wild animal, if you take it from one place to another, you might spread disease. So the lecture portion of the workshop is now done. We learned some amazing things like how to prevent snake bites, what to do if you know someone who was bitten by a snake, how to relocate snakes, and we're gonna do the hands-on stuff after the break that we're in. So it's lunch break right now, but we just learned that they have a whole animal room with reptiles and amphibians, so we should be getting lunch, but there's snakes in here. Yeah, why would we get lunch when there's snakes? Like, look at this California king. This is a, oh, a really God. old rescued Cali king that they have. Looks like it's blind in both eyes. And also, if I remember correctly, he said that it has a couple kinks down the back of its yeah. spine. Yeah, that's cool that they've taken rescues yeah. here at the- Ambassador animals. Yeah. Over here we have a gopher snake hiding in a half log. He's, uh, he was out earlier. Yeah, yeah now, he's, now he's hiding. Here we have a northern Pacific rattlesnake, which is the native rattlesnake to the northern California area. Yeah, I think that's the only one in the Sacramento area, from yep. what I remember him saying. Yep. Aww. I wonder what kind of garter snake that is. I don't know, actually. They have a huge bullfrog. Apparently the bullfrog uh, will go after you if you get too close. Yeah, apparently this one has an attitude. <laughs> He's huge, too. Yeah, that's a ginormous bullfrog. And they have a western screech owl. Aww, he looks so sleepy. Aww. <laughs> like, go away, I'm sleeping. Cute. 
So yeah, they have a room full of ambassador animals here, and I guess there's also another room full of venomous snakes, which hopefully we'll get to check out later too, but we have to make sure we're back in time for the hands-on portion of this workshop. Well, we found the venomous room. Yeah, they also have rosy boas. Oh, and there's a rosy boa in here. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. hey, look at you. You're adorable. And a Cali King down here. Oh, you're a good-looking California King. Yeah, you are. You look great. There's a, there's a really mad snake in here as well. Yeah, there's a, a diamondback in <laughs> here that is not happy with us being in here. I'm sorry. I know, you're beautiful. You're all tucked in. You look great. I, I know you'd like to stare at that Aatrox all day. But we do have to get suited up to do the hands-on portion. Oh, that's now? Yeah, we're getting ready for that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know you could dance. I can't. <laughs> we're all suited up. All right, so what we just learned is how to properly hold a snake hook, which actually I didn't know this. You don't want to hold this, the hook by the end of the handle, but rather you want to use your forearm to kind of brace against the hook so that instead of relying on your wrist strength in order to, to pick up the snake, you have the strength of your entire arm to pick it up with. So we're practicing with a water bottle, hooking the handle and picking up the, the bottle properly with the uh, correct positioning of the hook. So if I hold it with, at the base... Yeah, like the further down you hold it, the worse it is. Yeah, yeah. we're relying yeah. on my wrist strength. Yeah. Whereas if you brace it, you get... Oh yeah, that's so much easier. Okay. Once they're up like this, they're generally not going to try to freak out because they think that they're at that point on a tree branch. Yep. So they the wouldn't. Bigger bodied, larger snakes, especially, are afraid of falling, I think. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. Practicing the two hook technique. Oh, and I wasn't even holding the hooks correctly there. I oh, know, I'm going to have to like retrain how I hold a hook. Alright, so Emily is now putting the snake in the bucket safely. Alright, there you go. I was watching to see your hand placement on that lid. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. It's it was good. okay? Alright. It's good. It's good. <laughs> and now she's taking the snake out of the bucket. <laughs> what a good narration. Yeah, 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 I'm good at narration. And yes, this is a non venomous gopher snake, but we're practicing on a non venomous snake before we go to the hot ones. So that's why we're treating them the same way as we would a rattlesnake. Yep. So we're going to bring out uh, Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool is a Northern Pacific rattlesnake. He came from Cool, California. And so Adrian is demonstrating the technique that we use to get a snake from Delta Containment. So Mr. Cool is a very uh, typical adult male rattlesnake. Um, we actually don't know how old he is, but he's probably over five years for sure. Now we're practicing with the real deal. Ed's turn to bucket the rattlesnake. A little bit different than the gopher snake, but same techniques. <laughs> Holy cow. He's massive. So this is tubing. Yeah. So his bitey end is contained and safe. Michael is holding him at the uh, juncture of the tube and his body, and so he's holding him, so he's stuck in there basically. He's very, very strong, so he's actually, I'm actually gonna use both hands here. Yeah. And we have him on the table because he's heavy. He's, he, he might weigh around 10 pounds, but if anyone is interested, they can come up and see what a rattlesnake feels like. Like, 
it there with no. it. But it's, uh, yeah, it just shows you how incredibly awesome rattlesnakes are. A little bit about the conservation of this snake. So this is actually the main target for rattlesnake roundups. Hmm. And so every single year, thousands of these snakes are rounded up from their dens where they uh, brewmate together in sometimes large groups. Uh, and then they are slaughtered in mass. Mm -hmm. And so, and rattlesnake roundups were really uh, a common thing, um, you know, decades ago, but they're obviously for animal cruelty reasons. They're, um, they're much out of fashion, but there's only a few that still exist today. Well, the workshop just ended here at Save the Snakes, and it was about a seven hour workshop total, like not including the lunch break. So there was a lot of material that we learned today. We we actually learned a lot. I thought some of the information would be kind of like uh, repeated information since we've been into reptiles for a while, but I learned a lot of new stuff today, actually. It started with learning about the species of snakes that live in California, specifically the rattlesnakes. Then we learned things like how rattlesnake venom works and what to do if you are bitten by a snake. Then we learned how to relocate snakes whether venomous or non-venomous, like not moving them very far, what types of habitats to look for and places to put them in the wild so they have the best chances at success. We learned the best protocols to help reduce the chance of spreading diseases amongst populations of reptiles in the wild. Like there was a lot of great conservational information that we learned today. Then after the break, we went outside and we got to do the hands-on portion, which was so much fun. For that, they taught us how to properly hold a hook, first of all, and then how to hold a snake with a single hook, then double hooks. There's a bunch of stuff in between, as well as then moving on to how to deal with a venomous snake and how to handle that properly. And finally, with both venomous and non venomous we learned how to move them into a bucket for transportation. I think they handled all of the hands-on portions perfectly and in just the right order where all of us students were working with a gopher snake, a non-venomous snake at first, and then applying all of those techniques to a venomous rattlesnake in person. Granted, even they admitted this too, working with a rattlesnake that's been used for educational purposes for years is gonna be a different experience than working with a wild one that isn't used to handling or used to people at all. Today's goal was really to start developing that muscle memory on how to hook a snake in general. So we're really going to keep practicing that too and apply everything we learned here at home. And since we were all so well behaved, we got the special opportunity to watch Michael and Eric tube a snake. And we were then able to see a diamondback rattlesnake, a western diamondback, up close and personal. I got to feel his scales, which were so thick they feel like osteoderms, which are like the thick scales you'd feel on an alligator. And I even got to feel the rattle in my hand while it was rattling. I've never experienced that before. That was amazing. Yeah, it was cool to see the, the shaky muscles. Yeah, yeah, the, the whole tail shaking and feeling the vibration of that in your hand along with the rattle itself. I'm never going to forget that. So yeah, it was an awesome day here at Save the Snakes, but I think we're going to wrap things up with Michael, the founder. Well, Michael, thank you so much for letting us attend the Snake Relocator course at Save the Snakes. If people are interested in attending this course as well, where can they go? Well, it was so wonderful to have you both take the course. <laughs> and if you'd like to learn more or potentially take a course for yourself, visit savethesnakes.org slash training, or you can find it just by visiting our website, savethesnakes.org. And you have courses planned for 2022, right? Yes, that's right. We plan to have a course. Uh, so we have two courses, an introduction snake relocation course, which was today. And then we have a more advanced course, which is called the level one handling certificate course which basically dives deep into toxinology, snake conservation and ecology, what to do when you're bitten by a snake and much more but also some really advanced handling techniques and we're gonna have both of those courses um, multiple throughout the year of 2022 at least each month so visit our website to learn more. Maybe we'll have to come back for the level one venomous handling course. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Anyway, uh, Michael is also an author, in case you didn't know. We would highly recommend the Snakes for Kids book. The Snakes for Kids book has tons of illustrations and photographs and species profiles of snakes from around the world. It's a kid-friendly book, obviously, and it is really easy to read. It has some species that we are pretty familiar with, like the Western Hognose Snake, for example, and some that you might not be familiar with, like mangrove snakes. But really, it covers a wide variety of species, and it's fun to read. Everyone should learn something new from it. So if you would like to get the Snakes for Kids book, where should they go? So again, visit SaveTheSnakes.org and check out our gift shop. And so all proceeds from this book go to international snake conservation efforts. It was such a joy to be able to write this book and kind of share my knowledge. And when people purchase it, they support snake conservation. So thank you. 
Well, thank you everybody for watching today's video of Ed and I going to California to take the snake relocation course at Save the Snakes. Thank you as always to our Patreon backers for making this trip to Sacramento possible. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have been able to come out here, so thank you so much. And thank you to Michael yet again for letting us join today. Oh, such a pleasure to have you and thank you all for watching this video. We'll see you next time.